Hello everybody and welcome again for a new um, Jelly Arts class at Michaels. My name is Birgit Koopsen and I'm a brand ambassador for Jelly Arts and I'm in the Netherlands. Um, besides me, Dominique is here also from Jelly Arts to answer any questions that I uh, can't answer during the, this um, meeting. So um, if anything comes up, you can put it in the chat and if Dominic thinks it's worth uh, answering um, for everybody, then she will ask me to answer uh, the question. So today's class is about the mini placement tool. And the mini placement tool is a tool that is um, created to use with the gel plate to um, make sure that if you make layer prints that you get all of the layers in the same position on your, uh, on your paper. And um, so I'm going to show you how um, this tool works and how efficient it is to um, use with layered printing. So let's turn the camera to my workspace. There we go. Um, so here it is, the mini placement tool in its original uh, packaging. This is uh, how it comes. It's a very simple tool. Here I have one that's out of the packaging. It's a very simple, it's almost like a thick ruler without any measurement. It only has like um, a little edge that is a little bit higher than the rest of the tool. And it has the same thickness as um, the Jelly Arch gel plate, um, which means that you can just uh, put your paper in there and it will have the same height as your um, gel plate. So to work with the, um, with the tool, there are a couple of things that you have to prepare when you start uh, printing. And that um, depends a little bit on the kind of print you want to make. So for instance, if you want to make prints where the print is exactly in the middle of your paper, then you have to make sure that your paper has the right size to print on. And that is very easy to do. You can very easily cut your paper to the right size. So the edges of the uh, tool are one inch. That means that when you put your paper in here, then in this corner, you will always have um, a frame or a border of um, one inch. So if you want to have your paper, uh, your print exactly in the middle of the, uh, your paper, you also need that one inch border on edge on this side. That means that you have to actually measure, or of course it's on the packaging, but you have to know the size of your gel plate and you have to add one inch for the left side, one inch for the right side. That means that if your gel plate, like this one that I'm working on, is five inches wide, that your paper needs to be seven inches because one inch here, one inch there. And you also do that for um, the vertical. Is that the right word, an English word? I don't know. At least for this uh, side, you also do the same. So this plate is seven inch. So you add one inch for the top and one inch for the bottom. That means that your paper needs to be nine inches. So for a five by seven plate, you need a seven by nine inch paper. If you have a six by six plate, then you need eight by eight paper. If you have a three by five plate, you need a five by seven uh, uh, sheet of paper. So it's very easily, you can always just add two inches to the size of your plate on both sides. So here I have a sheet of paper that is, I will show you, um, seven by nine inches. And my plate is five by seven inches. So my, uh, if I put my paper into the corner of the tool, then my plate will always be, or my print will always be exactly in the middle. Um, I'm going to show you some prints or at least one print on the 5x7 plate and one layered print on a little circle plate. 
because um, I think it will be fun to see that you can actually use the mini tool also with different shapes of plates. So um, it, they don't even have to be rectang um, rectangle or square, even with round plates, you can use the mini tool. And I, uh, I want to show you how. So depending on the types of um, prints you want to make, you have to have your um, tools, so today I'm going to do um, just random layering. And I think on the bigger sheet, I will use um, a mask. And let me see. So I have a box here with some ha with handmade masks. And I will just find one that fits on the five by seven plate so I can use that for my sample and these are maybe a bit small or how about how about a little cat i i think i will use the cat and put this aside so um, I made this mask myself using um Duralar mat um, that's um, kind of a plastic film that can be used for mixed media purposes. And um, it holds a paint, but also uh, all kinds of wet media. But it's also perfect to create uh, masks and stencils because it doesn't tear and it doesn't buckle or wrinkle when you use it with wet media. So, and it's uh, semi-translucent. So uh, what I do is I just um, print out images that I found online and then I put the Duralar on top and trace it with, uh, with a permanent pen or permanent marker and then I cut them out. So that's a very easy way to create your own masks and stencils. You can even use uh, like a magazine and um, for instance, for this lady, and I have a couple more, let me see this one. This one is, is from a, a fashion magazine. So I just traced the image and then cut it out. And as you can see, it's translucent. So you can just put it on top of something and then uh, trace whatever image you want to use. But I'm going to use the cat today, I think. So I'm going to build up the layers from the very start. So I'm going to start with the first layer. And the first layer, I'm going to do a solid, just a solid color. Or I can use two colors, that's fine. But I'm not going to uh, add any texture to the color. I just want to have a base layer. And I'm just going to use some bright, not too dark colors because I want to do layering and then uh, I prefer to start with the lighter colors because the darker colors usually are uh, easier to work with if you want to um, cover up areas of your of your print. So the lighter colors are usually more translucent, although that's not always the case. So that's also something you might want to check when you uh, start layering, if your colors are opaque enough to use in the second or the third layer, for instance. So I've uh, rolled out my paint and I'm just going to place the tool here in the corner. And now I'm going to put my paper exactly into the edge of the tool. And then just I, I just move it away. Um, I, need, I need a pencil. I'm just going to mark the bottom of my uh, print. So I know that I always have my paper the right side up 
of course i have to be uh careful that i don't uh move the plate too much on my uh, on my surface although that is doesn't e even really matter because i'm always going to put this in that corner wherever my my plate is so it didn't completely pick up my paint there but that's okay because i'm going to do several layers anyway so um what if i want to add texture to this layer i'm going to roll out a new layer of paint new colors and and let me see i don't really want to have it stand out too much so i'm not going to use uh, very dark colors for this uh, layer. Just going to mix these two colors together. And now I want to create texture in this layer. So I want actually to remove some color um, from my plate. And I'm just going to use bubble wrap for that. Yeah, let's do bubble wrap. It doesn't really matter. What I use. Here, we had a quick question from yeah. earlier. Is the Duralar, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, um, is that similar to the vellum paper? Um, no, it's not because uh, vellum, well, actually, I think vellum can actually be torn. And if you put vellum, water on vellum, it will buckle. So it looks kind of vellum, but it is very different uh, material. Okay, so, and which are you using here? I'm using the Duralar because uh, I want my uh, stencils to stay in the right shape. I don't want them to tear when I lift them up from the... Uh, from the plate because if I put vellum on the plate and my uh, paint is quite wet and the vellum gets wet and I would uh, um, pull this up for instance the smaller parts the more fragile parts might tear and that will never happen with the door alarm this is more kind uh, kind of a plastic I suppose. So vellum is actually paper and I don't think this is paper. It's and more like- And type of the uh, Duralar are you using? Is there a specific type? The, it's just called Duralar Matte and uh, it is available on the uh, Michael's website. I, it, is it not on my, on the uh, list because I couldn't get in there and see what I actually put on the list, unfortunately. I'm going to double check that now and I'll get that link in the comments for you all. Okay, great. So meanwhile, while I was talking, I did the second layer. And as you can see, uh, my second layer is completely uh, overlapping my first layer. And it's in exactly the same spot as my as my first layer. So what I want to do now is I want to add um, my, my silhouette, my mask. And I have to make sure that the paint on my paper is really dry before I do that. So I'm very quickly going to um, um, dry my paint with my heat tool because I'm going to use a repositionable um, adhesive to apply my mask. And um, if the paint is still wet when I do that, then uh, I might actually um, pull up the paint from the, um, from the paper when I remove my mask and I don't want that. So that's why I dried it. And then here I have um, my repositionable adhesive. It's from Scrapbook Adhesives, also available at Michael's. And it's uh, um, a tape runner with, uh, it has little dots. And um, it's perfect to use for masking and stenciling because you can just apply it to your paper and then you can remove it without 
damaging your uh, your print. I hope I I made it dry enough because if the if it's not dry enough, it will definitely um, create little white dots where I pull up the paint. So if that happens, then you know it's just because I wasn't patient enough to let the paint dry enough. You have to be a bit careful with that. So what I've done now is um, basically I blocked part of my background. And um, if I'm going to add a, a new layer on top of this, then I will cover up everything around my cat with paint. And then when I remove the mask, my cat will have the color of my background. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to, I'm actually going to do a white layer because I um, want to make sure that I don't see too much of the background shining through. And um, for instance, I would like to make um, a darker blue or maybe a magenta background, but my colors are translucent or at least semi-translucent, like for instance, the Galleria Prussian blue, or I also have, this is also a really nice color. The, um, it's called Caput Mortium Violet. That's a strange name, but uh, it's, a, it's a lovely color. And this is also semi-translucent. So if I would put that straight onto my background, then um, my background would really shine through. And it's okay with me if that's uh, happening a little bit, but I don't want that too much. So um, I'm just going to cover it up with a layer of white first. And then uh, I can basically put any color on top of that um, and keep keeping the original color. So if I would try to, for instance, put a yellow layer on this, then I would not only, only see the background, but uh, it would also change the yellow. Because if I put yellow on orange, you will never get a bright yellow like the yellow down here. Um, but if you put yellow on a white background, then you get the original bright yellow. So it's always good to put a layer of white in between if you're not sure if your, um, if your paint is going to cover your background well enough. Then you can always do this uh, and kind of start new start uh, again with new colors going back to um, the starting point which is white paper so again i'm placing the tool exactly in the edge of the gel plate and um, i'm i like to move the tool away when i do the rubbing because i i can go nicely around the edges of the plate. And I also like to move it away before I add new um, paint because otherwise my tool would be like covered in paint because you go outside of the edges of the plate with your brayer and then uh, the tool will look horrible. So my uh, mask came off, which is totally fine because now you can see straight away what happened here. And as you can see, there are no white dots, which means that my uh, paint was actually dry enough to put the adhesive on. So you can now still see a little bit of the background shining through and just imagine that I did this with a color that uh, you can totally imagine that it would not um, be the original color that I put on there. And now if I put a semi-translucent color on top of this, then most of the background will be gone and uh, create a nice contrast with the mask of the cat. So 
I need to clean this because I don't need that. So if I would have used uh, another color here, and that's for uh, when you do other types of prints, if I would have used a dark blue, for instance, here, then I would have totally pulled a print from this um, silhouette that stayed behind on the plate. There's just not so much use in pulling that little white cat that was left behind here. So that's why I'm cleaning the plate. So now I'm just going to put that mask back on here. Um, before adding yet another layer. And I want to do at least three more layers just because I want to show you. So um, again, I'm going to do a solid layer and then add texture in another layer uh, showing that solid layer shine through. So I need a solid layer with some contrast to the orange and the green. So how about I do some, um, let's see, I do some um, of this color with the strange name, the difficult name, I'm just going to um, call it Violet. And I think I might also add some of that Prussian blue that I showed earlier. That is, if I can open the tube. Okay. That's a nice layer of color. And put the tool back in position. Place the paper on top. I feel some air bubbles. I have to make sure to push those away because where there is air, the paper will not touch the plate and then also not pick up the paint. That's why I prefer using my hands uh, for the rubbing instead of um, using my brayer. And I think I get a really nice contrast here. Yeah, that looks great. So I'm going to remove my cat. And now I have a really funny cat on my uh, plate. And I think it might be worth picking that up. Maybe I can use it for something for a later project. Uh, it needs to dry a tiny little bit more. So I'm just going to go through the um, to the chat and see um, if there are any questions that I can answer. So yeah, I see there is a whole discussion about the Duarlar and it, it, it is kind of acetate. Uh, you could you can definitely use acetate sheets to create um, stencils and masks. The difference is that um, the Duralar also uh, can be used to 
actually work on because it is um, you can use even watercolor on it and it will uh, it will spread and it will stay on there which will net not um, be possible with for instance acetate but if you use um, acetate sheets if you have um, even if you have packaging material that is like the harder acetate and you can cut um, pieces out of the of the packaging as long as it is flat you can cut out whatever you want and uh, use it as as a mask and of course you can also create masks from from paper and if you use them uh, quite a lot then they will get this like uh, layer uh, of built up acrylic paint which is also kind of a plastic and they will get sturdy uh, sturdier and sturdier in time um, if you are lucky enough not to have uh, torn them before you have built up several layers so if you use paper then of course you have to make sure that it is not too fragile paper and that it doesn't tear when you um, use them with wet media So I'm curious to see what I can pick up from the plate, the leftover. It might actually turn out to be quite a nice print that I can work on further. And at the same time, I will have cleaned my plate. Yeah, not too bad. I Here can totally... We got yeah. a question, um, two questions. Why do you let the paint dry on the plate some of the time, but not always? And why are you using multiple colors? Um, so the multiple colors is an easy one to answer. That's just because I like a lot of color. And um, um, I, I think um, my prints are a little bit boring if I use just one color in, in every... A layer but that's a totally uh, personal and it's a, it's just my preference to use multiple colors um, why do I leave uh, paint to dry sometimes and not always um, that depends on oh and let me think about how I am going to explain that um, so what I could do is um, so for instance, the cat, I let the cat uh, dry. What I could have done is when I removed the, the mask, I could have pulled the cat up right away, but uh, probably part of it would have always, uh, already been dry and then uh, you will not be able to pick up everything. And then um, it's better to leave it to dry and then use another layer of wet paint to pull everything. So you cannot pull um, dry paint from the plate directly. So if part of your paint on the plate has dried and part has not dried, you will never get a perfect print because some of it will pull up and some won't. So sometimes it's just easier uh, or safer to get a nice print if you leave everything to dry and use that extra layer to uh, pull it up. It can also be that um, I uh, like paint that's underneath a stencil, for instance, uh, better than paint that I uh, pull directly from the open areas from a stencil. And um, so it's um, a different effect when you pull uh, dry paint from the plate. It just looks different than when you pull wet paint from the plate. So I'm I'm not really sure if that kind of uh, makes sense and explains it right now because uh, I think um, that is a whole subject on its own that I could probably fill an hour class with um, showing, showing and explaining why in some um, cases I will leave my paint to dry and why I, um, why I don't. But I will try during this class um, to explain why I do what I do when I do it. And I hope that helps.
Thank you, Birgit. And also we had one question left right now. Um, can you please let us know the brand of the adhesive dots? Do you have okay, so that's that on hand? this one. This one. So that's uh, scrapbook adhesives. It's also available at um, um, Michael. So it's called scrapbook adhesives by 3L. That's the brand. And they have um, the repositionable dots, but they also have um, uh, crafty power tape, which is like a really strong tape that's on a roll like this. And it, it's like a uh, uh, a strip of paint, but they also have um, these rollers, these tape um, rollers with um, permanent adhesive, and they are like little strips, and they are red. And then there are special ones for vellum, I think, and um, all kinds of different ones, but this is uh, absolutely one of my favorites to use for uh, masking. Okay, let's do another one. I want some texture in my background. So I need my mask again. I want to keep my cat orange and green. So I have to make sure that I block that area every time I make a print. And I'm going to put some uh, turquoise. Yeah, I think I'm going to put a turquoise texture on there. And I'm also adding a little bit of a brilliant yellow green. So, and again, this is just because I like a lot of colors together and um, there's no specific reason to do it or not to do it. If you prefer to use only one color or if you want to mix it, uh, you see me do a lot of um, making gradients uh, of my colors, but of course you can totally mix it like this if you like. I'm just going to do that now. This is not something that uh, I do a lot um, spontaneously. For some reason, I kind of always do the, the gradients, but that's just uh, also, again, a personal preference. And that's just what I like. And if you like it differently, you can totally do it differently. There's no reason um, why you should do it like me. So here I have a little pill strip. Uh, I have a couple of pill strips and I'm going, I'm just going to use all of them to create texture in my background. So I'm pushing it down into my paint and the pill strip is, if I do it right, picking up paint from the plate, leaving paint behind in the open area. So this will create dots. And um, I could have done the whole plate with the little dots, which I would actually maybe even have liked more. But then I would have to clean this, um, this strip in between because once there's a, a wet layer of paint uh, on your tool, then if you use the same tool right away, and the paint is still wet, it will not pick up as much paint um, the second time you put it down on the plate because it can hold only this much wet paint. So it needs to either be cleaned in between or it needs to dry. Otherwise it's just not removing enough paint from the plate. It's not picking up enough paint but I think this is going to look quite well. I think the bigger circles are a little bit too big. I'm just randomly going to, and now I hope that it's not too dry already to 
pick it up because even though it's not as hot anymore as it was for the last couple of weeks, it's still quite warm inside and my paint is drying really quick. So what you can do if, you, um, if your paint is drying too fast, if you need more time to, um, to create texture, for instance, and you want a little bit more working time, then you can add a slow dry medium to your paint and then you have more, more time uh, to work. The downside uh, of that for me is that uh, if I want my paint to dry on the plate, actually, I have to wait for a long time. And I'm not very patient. Oh, I like how this turns out. So I said to you that I am going to add at least one more layer, which means that I have to cover up part of this layer, which is uh, making me a little bit sad, but I'm going to do it anyway, because that's what I said that I would do. And I just want you to, to realize and to show you that uh, with gel printing, you can just keep layering, layering, layering. Um, so if at some point during your process, something happens that, um, that you don't like, then just add another layer. You can even go, for instance, if, what if I would have not liked this color combination and this texture at all? If I really, really had uh, not liked it, I could have just put a solid layer uh, of an opaque color on top and just start over. So it's, you can just keep going until, um, until you like it. I see something, uh, say someone saying, what are you wiping the plate with? And I'm, I'm using baby wipes, just uh, cheap lotion baby wipes, but you can also just use a wet or a damp cloth to wipe your plate uh, if you need to um, clean it in between. And even, so I might even leave this to dry when I'm done. And then it turns into, it almost feels like fabric and you can use it for all kinds of mixed media projects. You can even sew it which is fun. Okay, another layer. And I need it to be an opaque layer. I don't want to add an extra white layer. So I have to find a color that is opaque, uh, that is a nice contrast to the background, but also a nice contrast to my cat. Uh, because of course, I still want my cat to stand out so let me find a color that is opaque and um, <laughs> maybe this one. This is not an opaque one at all. That's not a good one. What I can do, what I could do is to get a, a lighter uh, color of violet. I can mix it with an opaque color, like a white or the rose pink. I'm not really sure how that would contrast with my cat, but... Um, hmm. That's always difficult questions. Um, I'm just going for it and we'll see, I mean, I don't have to create a masterpiece right now. I just want to show you how it works. And um, if you're doing this uh, on your own, then you have way more time to consider uh, color choices. You could even write it out before you start. Um, so for instance, I, what I could have done is uh, thinking 
before I started printing what color I want my cat to be in the final print. And that's the first layer that I start with because the cat is um, basically the first two layers, the color of the cat. And then I can think about what I want my background to be. And in that matter, I can totally um, um, make a, a kind of a, a sketch to see which color I need to put in which layer. And now I did something stupid because I need, I need masks, more masks. And uh, let me see, maybe I can find some here real quick. Okay, I don't know how this is going to work before it dries. I might actually just go with whatever I have here and use a leaf. <laughs> this is going to be a wild print, but it might be actually a fun print too. Let's just try something. Anyway, it's just all about showing how the layering is done and we might actually get surprised. Sometimes when you expect the least, you get the nicest prints. And when you expect a lot, you sometimes get really disappointed. So let's just see. Let's just see what's happening here. So I see a couple of people liking the first, the previous layers. I hope this still looks a little bit, at least a little bit nice. And I also now just randomly put the leaves on the, on the plate because I needed to work quickly. I could have. Uh, also applied, see, I did exactly the wrong way around. I should have put the leaves in the other corner. <laughs> so I wanted the leaves to be in this corner and I put them there, but of course everything gets mirrored. So <laughs> that didn't work out. Anyway, that's uh, a little bit, it requires a little bit of thinking, but I'm pretty sure you, uh, you understand the idea. So I want to have a leaf here and I wanted to have two leaves there. And then what I can do is, uh, but what I can do, could do now is just put the cat back on and, uh, and add another layer and just start over. I'm not going to do that right now because we don't have that much time. And I'm, I, I'm sure that you uh, understand what uh, went wrong here. But um, you can also see that I have printed one, two, three, four, five, six. I've printed six layers right now. And um, you can see that they are all exactly in the same position. So that's the benefit of the uh, mini placement tool. And now I also want to show you with the with the smaller plate. So Jelly Arts has a variety of these uh, sets. I think there are three or four also on uh, Michael's website. And they are combinations of three different shapes. So uh, in total, uh, I don't know, I think there are nine different shapes. Yeah, so there will be three sets probably. I'm not completely sure, but there are there are circles, there are triangles, there are um, rectangles, squares, hexagon, 
octagon, all kinds of uh, different shapes. And of course, if you have uh, like a, a straight edge, then it's easy. You just put the, um, um, the tool there and it will always, the tool will always be straight, but you can totally ima imagine probably that with the circle, um, it's very hard to always have the tool in the same position. But the fun part is it doesn't have to be. As long as it's touching um, the, the plate on two sides, it doesn't really matter how you put the tool. You will always um, print the circle in the same position. The only thing that you have to um, consider is... Uh, what you are printing. So if you are printing something like, let me see, I just had my sample here. I don't know where I left my samples. Probably somewhere in my, um, oh, here they are. So I have a, a sample here from a circle. So this is just some kind of abstract mixed media kind of uh, layered background uh, that I could use to create a card or something. And it doesn't really matter if my, um, my, my dots are a little bit more like this or a little bit more like this. But if you do something like a little landscape, for instance, then of course you want, uh, you don't want the, the mountains to be like this and then you have to um, make sure that you keep the tool about in the same position. What you could do is just draw a line, the outline, so you know uh, where to place the tool when you put it back into position. But you don't have to do that, and I will show you that you really don't have to do that. Um, for this print, I also cut my paper in the right size. So I measured the size of my plate, which is three inches. And then I need one inch all around to, uh, to get it in the middle. So that means um, that my three inch plate, for my three inch plate, I need to add two inches on all, all around. So to add, uh, two for this side and two for that side side so my paper has to be five inches to get the plate uh, exactly in the middle and I'm just going to put my mask on the crown so I can access my paints and I'm just going to do a very random a very random print and that's way too much paint for my little plate so I have to roll off some of it. So as I'm not too concerned about uh, the top or the bottom of my print, I am not going to mark my print. I'm just going to put the paper in the corner. And lift it up, and here I have my first, my first print. And now I want to add some color on top. How about? Beer get These... Laura was wondering: Are you cleaning your briar in water at all, or are you just rolling it on paper in between uses? So here I put it only on this. So this is my sheet that I just started uh, during this uh, life. So I'm using it to roll off my brayer in between colors. Um, if it gets like really dirty, um, so most of the paint comes off doing this in between colors and um, your layer your layers are not building up really fast but at some point you will have like a thick layer of acrylic paint all around and then you can just put it in a bucket with water and some people say um, 
they have perfect results with just water overnight, for instance. I like to add uh, a washing detergent that is uh, that we have here in the Netherlands, which is called uh, Biotex. And I don't know if there's an equivalent in the US, but this is like uh, for hand wash and it has enzymes. And the enzymes are what um, kind of releases the paint from the brayer. So I just put it in there in cold water and I leave it in there overnight. And then next day I can just wash off the paint. There is something that's called Murphy's soap or Murphy's oil in the US and it works about the same, the same way. And uh, it also, that also removes paint from the brayer. But usually I do that only if um, like thick layers of paint built up on my brayer. It's not something that I do weekly. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe once a month, maybe not even. It's uh, I don't do it very often because I just make sure that I um, roll off my excess paint very well every time. Okay, I'm just using a very old school um, template, letter template that I still have from, I think, uh, secondary school or something. And I'm just pushing it into the paint. So it's going to remove some of the paint. And now I can, uh, it leaves the letters behind. The only thing that I did wrong right now is that I should have put it like this because when I pull the print, it's going to be mirrored, which means that my letters will be um, the wrong way around. But now I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to put this in a, a bit of a strange angle uh, because I want to show you that that really doesn't matter. The only thing is that my letters will not be straight on my on my circle because my paper is not straight, but the circle will always be in the same position. So you can see my letters are inside the circle. They're not going to be outside of the circle. No matter how I put my uh, tool, even if I put it like this, you will always have that same um, size of border wherever you put wherever you put the tool. So I always have it on this side at the top. But I can totally imagine if you are left-handed that you uh, might prefer it ha to have it the other way around and put your paper in here like this for instance, or maybe you want it like this. So you can all still put it from the bottom to the top, but then on the other side. So that's all up to you, whatever you prefer. Um, let's do uh, another layer. And please let me know if there are more questions because there are only a few minutes left. And as you can see, I'm now for this print, I'm not even like covering my entire plate. I'm, I decided to use only parts of the plate, which of course you can totally do in my previous print. I covered my entire plate all the time, but of course you can decide to have something only in a certain area of your of your print. Birgit, Kathy is asking, how would you work with the odd shaped plates like the triangle plate? Um, with the triangle, I would, uh, I don't think I have a tri, let me see if I have a triangle here because then you uh, use one, uh, as you can see, so this worked fine. Let me see if I have a triangle here, then I can, show it as long as you have one side one straight side at one yeah i have a triangle here so i can show you 
So if I would have my triangle on the on the plate, I would uh, either have the straight uh, it's straight at the top here, one side, or I would use this side and then make sure that I always have this corner here. So then it works the same as with the square or with the tri uh, a, a rectangle. You can just make sure that you have it in that corner there. And if you have another shape, for instance, like the, um, let me see, how is the how is this one called? This is an oxa, oxa I have no idea, oxaton or something, oxagon. Uh, but then you just put it down and you make sure that it touches as well the side as the top. So it always has to touch your plate, whatever plate you use uh, in, two, um, in two areas. So one at the top and one at the side, and then you're always good to go. You will always have your paper in the same position. So you can see maybe that the smaller plates are a little bit lower, a little bit thinner than, um, than the tool. But that's okay because when you put your paper uh, into the corner and you push it down onto the plate, then you move this aside and then you can totally go all around the edges of whatever plate you're using, even if you have a thinner plate. So for instance, if you have like the student plates, they are a little bit thinner than the, uh, than the um, original uh, five by seven plates, for instance, then it will still work because you just move the tool aside and then you can, uh, you can wrap your paper all over the plate. So I hope, um, and I'm, I'm actually going to show you that I, if even if I put my circle now in a totally different place and um, adding a random color just to show, rolling out a bit of paint and yeah, why not? Some cardboard. And put my tool there. It really doesn't matter where you put your plate, as long as your tool is touching your plate on two sides, you will always have it in the right position. So, um, yeah, especially for layering, when you do multiple layered uh, prints with, uh, with masks and um, uh, silhouettes and stuff like that, I think this is really uh, a great addition for, uh, for printing. Um, I mean, if you do just uh, collage paper and you fill your entire paper and you don't have a border and you don't really... Uh, care about where your where your paint uh, gets, then of course you you don't need this. But if you want to make nice multiple layered prints that are always in the same position, then this is really really helpful. So I hope that I uh, was able to answer some of your questions about the tool and how it works and uh, why you should have one, and uh, that you enjoyed this class. And I will be back um, next month on August 9. And um, I'm going to talk about um, printing with alcohol inks. So I hope to see you again uh, in a couple of weeks for a new class. And until then, I wish you all uh, a wonderful summer. So see you again. Bye.